this is this is the back of the head. So now we're we're posterior looking anterior again, right? So here we see what's left of C1, um, and here's our vert coming along the sulcus arteriosus and entering the dura. So the left and right margins of the image are lateral, up is superior, and we're looking anteriorly. This is that anterior spinal artery we, we mentioned before. In many, many books and diagrams, you're always gonna see the, the basal artery as this straight structure. In, in, in many, many cases, the basal artery has curvature to it. Sometimes it has quite a bit of curvature and goes all around. It's not always straight. Um, so uh, let's go through this. Um, just to understand the vertical relationships between the vessels and the nerves in relation to the bone. So we're going to start superior and we're going to move inferior. So up here, I don't know if you notice, but here in, in yellow, um, this is just uh, underneath uh, the level of the carotids here um, coming out. So, and this is uh, probably about where our posterior clinoids are. So that's the third nerve. As we move down, we're gonna see the SCA, superior cerebellar artery. So when we have our PCAs up here, basilar tip, SCA, basilar trunk. All these little guys that are cut, these are all perforators. So moving down, here's that, here's fifth nerve. Um, we, don't we don't really see fourth here. You can see it right here, the tiny little guy right there. Um, but here we have fifth nerve. And you can see, remember, fifth nerve's coming up and over that petrous ridge, you can see that right here, going into the middle fossa. This is all the posterior surface of the petrous bone. There's that superior petrosal sinus running along the petrous ridge. There's the petrous ridge. Um, and this one has been drilled, so you can see there's the carotid in the petrous bone, in the carotid canal, coming up um, and emerging at the level of the frame and lacerum to become the lacerum segment over here. Um, and then all the way medial to it, at the junction, you know, right, right, up, right on top of that petroclival fissure we looked at before is where we'll find Dorello's canal. And that's where we're gonna find sixth nerve. And sixth nerve is going straight, entering Dorello's canal, uh, exiting the dura, entering the cavernous sinus underneath B1 on its way to the superior orbital fissure. And so remember, third nerve is gonna be ab above the SCA. PCA is gonna be above um, everything from this perspective because it's supertentorial and everything else is infratentorial. Um, so uh, we have two, three, four, five, six. And then we have the ICA. And as we said, the ICA comes off the basilar. You can notice left and right side are not perfectly symmetrical either in this case. That's you know often due to that curvature of the basilar artery. So it comes out, it f comes off at the level of seven and eight, and you know, oftentimes forms a loop in proximity to seven and eight as they enter the internal auditory canal. So seven and eight have that direct course from their origin as they enter seven and eight, and uh, I'm sorry, as they enter the IAC, and they go in their respective ways. We saw seven uh, exiting the skull before via the stylomastoid foramen. So there are seven and eight. And now as we move a little bit lower, we're now coming down, here's our vertebral basilar junction, here are our left and right vertebral arteries. We can see the pica, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery coming off of the verts. And you can see it again, it's at the level around the jugular frame. Not always consistent, but uh, usually intradural. Um, and from uh, the vert, sometimes from the basal or sometimes absent, sometimes extradural. But most commonly uh, intradural and it, it's somewhere around here because it does course around uh, the jugular frame. So remember, uh, relationship between three and SCA, which, and relationship between three and the posterior clinoid process, um, and the basal artery relationship with the clivus, Ica is about the level of seven and eight. Pica, variable, often intradural, and will come around uh, the you know, nine, 10, 11, going into the jugular frame. Here's that anterior spinal artery, C1, 
here is the verts coming in. This is the dural entrance. That blue down there is all venous plexus that surrounds the vertebral artery, comes in, enters the dura, going underneath uh, all of those cranial nerves and giving off the pica. And then there's, of course, 9, 10, and um, 11. Uh, going into the jugular foramen. Eleven, of course, has that spinal uh, component that comes in through the jugular foramen, um, I'm sorry, through the foramen magnum on its way to the jugular foramen, meeting with its cranial component and going through. And, you know, last but not least, here we have twelfth nerve. And twelfth nerve, short and fear, of course, the hypoglossal canal going through the hypoglossal canal. Um, again, all... Uh, uh, the nerves are moving superior to the vertebral artery.